Hello, this is Jerry and Jordan from the Cisco UK Systems Engineering team. Today we are going to show you Aeronet Developer Platform or ADP demo. First of all, what ADP brings to the table, what is new. So ADP opens up the modular port on the access points, which means any third party, not just Cisco, can now develop a module for Aeronet access points and provide that as a product to other third parties, other customers, other partners. What are the actual use cases? So obviously the Wi-Fi access point provides the Wi-Fi capabilities, perhaps Bluetooth low energy capabilities, but you may have a use case for uh, Zigbee devices. So let's say you have some in-room uh, building devices. Uh, you may want to control them using the Zigbee net network uh, but the Zigbee infrastructure is today is still independent from Wi-Fi. You basically run two uh, dedicated systems uh, to those functions. With ADP, you can essentially take the, the Zigbee functionality or the other functionality you might have. So perhaps you are looking for a camera module or a speaker module or a 3G, 4G module. Uh, so you can, you can develop a module and add it to the access point. The access point would then provide you with uh, power as well as the IP connectivity to uh, the network. From the investment protection perspective, obviously you buy an access point today, which you can uh, add additional features to later on. Uh, one of those features, for example, could be additional Wi-Fi standard, the other one could be the one we mentioned, the Zigbee radio, uh, or any other sort of radio or gateway to different radio world. Aeronet 3800 is the first access point which supports ADP, the new platform. Uh, we are going to focus on the modular port, the PCIe Express port, but there is a USB port on the access point which will be available later on for uh, expansion. From the actual process perspective, Cisco partners and customers can uh, register to Cisco DevNet, which is a site for developers. They can request uh, an HDK or hardware development kit, that's the prototyping module, uh, next to the access point. Uh, they then add a small computer like Raspberry Pi or Arduino, uh, and they develop the code or the function after the function is uh, ready, uh, they can then um, build the first few prototypes. And those prototypes are then tested, validated by Cisco, and Cisco makes sure that uh, the, the actual access point module and the access point itself don't interfere with each other. And finally, after that, uh, you can then start using the module start using the capabilities of the new module or if you decide to you can then uh, use it as your own product compatible with Aeronet developer platform and offer it to third parties. So with that uh, let us show you a live demo which we have in uh, the Cisco UK office in Green Park. Now what me and Jerry would like to show you is an actual physical deployment that we've both been working on to actually showcase some of the, the content and material that we were talking about previously but on a, a real live demo um, to also showcase the simplicity of the development platform and to actually show you how you can integrate not just into your products but into other Cisco products as well to make the whole journey as seamless as possible. Um, so Jerry's going to talk you through a live deployment that we currently have running in one of our Cisco labs. So what you can see here is a live stream, live video stream from a lab which we are running in Reading in the UK. Uh, so obviously we have uh, Aeronet uh, 3800 here. We have the hardware development kit. That's the prototyping board you can use to uh, prototype uh, the actual feature, the use case. Um, so on the development board you can see a small computer Raspberry Pi which is powered by the by the module um, it's using the same uplink uh, same cable as the access point 
On the Raspberry Pi, uh, we run a few scripts. So that would be your application uh, performing the actual functionality uh, you're building or your partner is building for you. Uh, the Pi itself is uh, actually connected to, uh, to the hardware development kit or HDK, if you will. And uh, on the HDK itself, uh, there are some uh, capabilities to, to get you started. So there's uh, a humidity and temperature sensor built in, and that's the use case we are going to show you. From the live video stream, uh, I will switch to the actual Raspberry Pi. So I basically SSH to, to the Pi. We can simply list the actual scripts we have here and we can run one of one of one of those so the first one is uh, the actual temperature reading and humidity reading so i'll just run the python script manually for you uh, what the raspberry pi did uh, it used the the cables uh, between the pi and the development board and it read the humidity and temperature uh, of the of the hdk the hardware development kit to help you visualize it, uh, there, there, are, there are multiple platforms, uh, but we use uh, Grafana, which is an open source tool uh, which you can use for these sort of use cases. So essentially the, the numbers you, you know, saw in the, in the CLI interface, the command line interface, you can now see uh, on a nice chart. From the WLC perspective or wireless LAN controller perspective, uh, you, can, you can see the access point here. So that's the 3800 we are using in this particular demo. Uh, what you do, you enable the, the actual uh, module or the port on the access point, uh, which we did, and you can then see uh, the module in the inventory. Now we actually come to the, to the integration with your own workflow third parties, other applications, other systems. We'll show you what we, what we did with uh, our net developer platform and uh, Cisco WebEx Teams. Cisco WebEx Teams is one of Cisco's collaboration tools that we have. Um, it enables employee to employee communications, um, not just for messaging, but also content sharing and persistent file sharing. Um, but one of the nice features of WebEx Teams is actually bot integrations, whereby you can have artificial intelligences running in WebEx Teams such that you can communicate with them and they'll go away and execute certain tasks for you, all automated with no one on the other end. So um, so I've developed a bot here called Aeronetbot. Uh, the name is apt. And what I'll show you is how we can abstract from the commands we were looking at previously to actually using, as Yuri said, different workflows and different applications, connecting those all together with APIs to make the whole journey as seamless as possible. So for instance, we, uh, we ran the Python script earlier to actually show the temperature and the humidity on the, uh, at the developer board. So what we can do now is we can just type in the command show temp into our collaboration tool and the bot will go away and actually perform that SSH connection, running of the Python script, and then return those values to us all within this application. This is really useful for uh, uh, distributed IT network teams as well, especially in like, a, for instance, a hotel example. If you want to be able to check certain values um, and run certain commands, you don't need to have necessarily administrative access and know things like passwords to be able to connect to certain resources. You can abstract that all away and use things like a bot here that will actually go and do those commands for you. So it's a really powerful tool, and this is integrated with one of our Cisco products. So that was showing the uh, the temperature and humidity. Just a really quick uh, spitting out of results. Uh, what I can do is type in a command list, for instance, and that will show us everything that the bot is able to do. Um, so for instance, we've added an additional functionality to do things like turn the lights on and off inside of the lab. Um, so for currently, for the current purpose sake, is that we have in the lab, the lights are on. As you can see, it's all lit up. But what we can do now is actually run the lights off command. And what this will do is this will go away and it will actually turn off the lights at the lab. So for instance, once again, 
in a hotel if you've got video streams of different areas in a, a massive floor complex and you're wanting to save energy in certain areas rather than going out to those areas you can run these commands remotely in order to change these variables and get updates essentially so as you can see the lights have come off just by talking to the bot all those commands have been abstracted and once again we can put those those lights back on as well just do the inverse of the commands and they'll come back on on the live stream as well do i actually need a laptop to run the run the board or can i do it from a mobile device no you don't need to run it from a laptop so the webex teams client is available on your iphone your smartphone on a dedicated desktop client as well or through a web browser um, the bots as well that you create within webex teams are contactable um, straight through our repository that we have online through the directory so for instance you can go into specific uh, your client list and search for a, a bot or a creation or another person these will all show up and you can then click into these and then directly contact them so you don't need to actually have a specific deployment running in a specific area these can be contactable worldwide for instance um, so if we swipe back across we'll see the lights have uh, come back on now in the lab what we'll do now is we'll actually run another command you'll see we've got a command up there called blink led now what this is going to do is this is going to run a few more commands than just uh turning on and off the lights in the lab what this is doing is once again it's talking to the raspberry pi um, but what this is doing is then it's pushing, well, it's doing an SSH connection to the wireless LAN controller that Jiri showed us earlier. And that's actually going to then send a command back down to the access point. And the access point itself is then going to start cycling its LED light that you'll see actually on top of the, the access point itself, this one here. Cool, so as you can see, the LED is now flashing different colors and blinking due to the commands that we, we just pushed down. Now what we'll do is we'll uh, reset the LED back to the standard on mode, on the green mode. Um, but what we'll do for this scenario is change it up slightly. So for instance, say we wanted to run these commands remotely. Say you were in your hotel and you were walking through it and you were, didn't have access to the desktop PC with the client running on it. What we're going to do now is we're actually going to use the Webex Teams mobile client to send those reset commands across and we'll show it demoed from there. So moving across to the iPhone version, we can see that we're in the Webex Teams client on an iPhone. You can see it's still contactable through your favorites or just searching in the directory that we have available. Clicking into it, we'll then type that reset LED command and the bot should reply. And once again, we're now doing the inverse of what we did previously, whereby the commands are being sent once again back up to the wireless line controller. And then that's going to push down the config to the LED and set that LED back to the standard green mode. Cool. So now, as you can see, the LED is back to the standard green mode. And that was sent through the iPhone. So allowing you to have a lot more flexibility and a lot more mobility as well not just uh, for actual devices, but for your employees and workers. So we'll show you a final bit of functionality that we have incorporated into the bot. We have the ability to SSH directly to the Raspberry Pi that we were showing you earlier, um, all from the Cisco WebEx Teams client. So rather than then having to launch a terminal session, type in the credentials, things like that, if you know the password set up here, we can directly turn the WebEx Teams client into a SSH client, essentially. So we can now type things like our ls command to view the, uh, the files that are in the directory we're currently in. This will come back across in a code block on the mobile client, but you can see all the different files that we had in there. We actually have a cisco.txt file in there, and what we can do is we can actually remove that file from the directory just by running the standard Linux commands. So rm to remove a file and we'll do cisco.txt send that across. So that will now remove the file and then if we do an ls command again what we'll do is we'll actually see the directory once more but hopefully the file's no longer there as you can see. So once again this is really just showing all the different things and integrations that you can have with the Aeronet developer platform and actually have 
the ability to build your own applications on the back end to provide you with business outcomes that you desire in your business and then being able to integrate those into different applications as well to provide a much more seamless experience and to actually provide a user-friendly user interface to uh, your employees who will actually be using this on a day-to-day -day basis. So I hope we've been able to show you the true potential of what you can do with the platform today.